While motorists elsewhere may worry about dependence on foreign oil, here in Brazil, people just aren't that concerned. At this station, there is gasoline. That price, you see, translates to more than $5 a gallon. But there is also ethanol, also called alcohol, for around $3 a gallon. In Brazil, ethanol is widely available. Most cars here have a so-called flex feature that lets them use either one. The station's owner told us ethanol accounts for 90% of his sales, despite one big difference with gas. Gasoline gets better mileage, but since the price of ethanol is so much cheaper, customers know it's better to fill up on ethanol. Doug Engel is a journalist based in Brazil who accompanied us on our trip through the country. He said Brazilians have a simple formula for choosing one over the other. If the price of ethanol is 70% or less of the price of the gasoline, you should use the ethanol. Ethanol is a homegrown biofuel. In the 1970s, Brazil embarked on an ambitious effort to develop biofuels from agricultural crops, seeking to free itself from dependence on foreign oil. In the United States, ethanol is made with corn, but here it's made from sugar cane. Today, 40% of Brazil's motor fuel needs are met with cane ethanol, way ahead of the U.S. effort. The town of Ribeirão Preto is the epicenter of Brazil's ethanol industry, surrounded by sugarcane fields as far as the eye can see. At this local plant, cane is crushed, extracting the juice that eventually becomes fuel. If it looks like we're in a time warp, we are. This equipment is decades old. And they've been making sugarcane-based ethanol the same way all that time. Nevertheless, owner Alberto Miziera says this vintage process has a big future. When you compare ethanol to gasoline, it will never run out. Ethanol will always win because it's renewable. In America and elsewhere around the globe, enthusiasm for ethanol as an alternative fuel is starting to fade. Ethanol, it is argued, poses environmental problems of its own and may take more energy to produce than it saves. But here in Brazil, industry leaders say they're finding ways to solve those issues. Example, Miziera's factory uses the pulp left over from the cane to make electricity. They burn it, firing engines which provide enough electricity to power the factory itself and even to feed some back to the community. Today, ethanol is still the main product of cane. But as time goes on, there will be a new product, electrical energy. That will be as viable as ethanol. Ethanol producers frequently tout the fuel as a way to save the planet. But even in Brazil, there are those who say it causes more harm than good. Manuel Tavares is an environmentalist. He makes his living selling a variety of products derived from bees. When the ethanol program started, this region here was around 22 percent forest land. Now it's down to around 3 percent. What is the effect of the deforestation that you are seeing? We've had a big shift in the weather. We'll have four or five months without rain. We'll have humidity levels around 5 percent, which is less than the Sahara Desert. And it's not just deforestation that's a problem, says Tavares. Another source of concern are conditions for the day laborers who harvest the sugar cane. In a scene from a hundred years ago, it is still done by hand, dirty, back-breaking work in fields that are burned first to expose the stalks. The growers have promised to replace the burning and hand cutting with machines in several years. But for now, plumes of smoke from fiery cane fields dot the countryside both day and night. The acrid air even concerns the gas station owner who owes his livelihood to selling ethanol. It causes things like bronchitis, respiratory problems. That's the bad of it. This customer said he's also worried about the health effects of ethanol, a sentiment he shared while topping off his car with it. When I asked why he keeps using ethanol when it bothers him, he admitted, well, because it's cheaper. 
I'm Edie Magnus reporting for World Focus from Hiberon Preto, Brazil.